Hey there, everybody. It's Dave Duford here at Final Expense Agent Mentor with another little short video. <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk about how to choose the right carrier to be your bread and butter carrier, and more generally, how to choose the right carriers for your final expense business. Now, this is a fairly important topic. It's something that isn't really discussed well. Uh, most people come into this business, they pick whatever their agency or upline demands that they pick, and then they write it. And what people find out, again, I have this saying when I sit down with new agents, you don't know what you don't know. So you need to find somebody that's credible, has experience, that will show you the things you don't know about, and but also that you feel a good sense of trust and sincerity from. Because that will, you want somebody to point you out in the right direction. So when you pick, when you look for a carrier and you're looking for the best option, what you want is a carrier that is specifically dedicated and committed to writing final expense business and being in the final expense business and understanding the final expense business. <clears throat> now, again, new agents sometimes will ask, they'll say, hey, Dave, you know, hey, they're right. They got a final expense application. They've got an underwriting. That means they did their uh, actuarial analysis to see if this product would stand and face up to uh, kind of what they would expect to be profitable. So that wouldn't they have an understanding of final expense? No, not necessarily. So when I talk about what do you need to look for, your job as a final expense life insurance, your number one job is to get out there and talk to as many people in a capacity to make a sale as much and as frequently as possible. What you don't want to be involved in as a final expense agent is the administrative side of this business, running amendment uh, rewrites, uh, problems with billing, problems with underwriting, not knowing if you've got your piece of business approved. Why is this important? Because that activity, that administrative activity, takes away from your sales efforts, which is what puts food on the table. So with that said, what you have to decide upon as a new agent, and an experienced agent for that matter, is find the carriers out there that are easy to write, flexible, you know, maybe competitive, don't have to be the most competitive, but not a ripoff. But more importantly, usually will approve everything that you send in. And part of that's your ability to underwrite effectively. The other part of that is to work with carriers that aren't so restrictive on what your underwriting requirements are. This is important because, for example, as a, as a mentorship coach in the FE agent mentorship program, when I brought on a lot of my new guys from the beginning, I used a carrier that underwrites well, competitively priced. However, they're an administrative nightmare. And I discovered that I underestimated the amount of trouble it would cause new agents to go back out there. Uh, lots of cases never got closed or sold because they required follow-up. It gives the opportunity to the client to renege gives them the opportunity to change their mind. Whereas if you close a deal, you leave, you know you got the deal closed. And the truth is, is that after seeing this from firsthand experience, I wholeheartedly believe it's worth less commission to take a plan out or work with a company that will give you, even if you're losing 10 points on your commission contract, if you get 95% of your company or <clears throat> 95 to 100% of your care, your deals approved as applied for versus 80 to 85 percent that's a big difference in your income and that's less of time that you need to run out there and rewrite deals put them with another company so on and so forth